So since the introduction, so I wanted to give you a, an update on, on how we've done so far. So since introducing recovery license model, 98% of the customers, of our new customers, have adopted it as their model. And the other 2% haven't because they just want the predictability? Um, predict <coughs> I can't say why, Aaron? No, you, you get predictability with RLM. You get predictability because the price only changes from year to year. Right. So during the year, the price is predictable. And as you get close to the end of the year, you know what your price is going to be next year because you look at your, it tells you, the software tells you so, what percentage. So the reason why they haven't is, uh, you know, for psychological reasons, it's new and there's always going to be somebody that doesn't well, pick something. Even though the customers that only can buy in three or five year cycles. Yeah, but you could, I mean, but it, it only goes down. So you could budget five years so, and, so that's and what discover they do. at the end of that, wait, I have money left over. And as screwed up as corporate America is, I've never heard of anybody getting fired for being too far under budget. Right. So that's in fact what they do. Exactly that, Howard. They, they budget for a higher performance score. They budget like, example, if you use a car and in, car in, uh, insurance, they budget like they're going to be in five car accidents and get 10 speeding tickets, but at the end of the year, nobody does that, so they end up saving money. Well, Some people I've had don't. years like that. So <laughs> what do you do about DR tests? So DR te in the RLM, we announced it last year, and we had a whole, um, you know, a detailed pr a slide. We didn't. So in the RLM model, DR tests are excluded from that percentage. We allow customers to do... Uh, they schedule. They, they, they schedule, schedule their test and... and you allow one, two years? No, no, it's not a number of... They can, recover, they can recover as much data in a DR scenario as much as they want. The catch is, though, they need to schedule the DR at least 30 days in advance of doing it. And when we went out to market, when we did our research, we found out that people doing DR tests don't do them from today till tomorrow because that's a real recovery. <laughs> they schedule their DR tests at least between three to six months in advance. That's the information that the market told us. So scheduling it 30 days in advance allows them to not cheat and call and pretend everything is a, you know, a DR test. So if it's a real test, then you know you can schedule 30 days. If it's not a real test, it's a production recovery, and then you, you know, you, then it counts towards that percentage. We did that to avoid people gaming the system. Do you have anybody that like does a DR test monthly, like a set schedule? At the end of every month, we're running a DR test. Um, we actually not, haven't. Not not that I know of, but if they wanted to, they could do. I do that weekly. I mean, you test weekly? I, no, I would <laughs> if I could, right? Why not? I mean, the, the uh, only your SLA is as valuable as the last time you tested the recovery. So if it if you only did the last time your DR six months ago, that's what your SLA is worth. What it was six months ago, and not what happened in the, in the last six months. Yeah, but I mean, so it costs I, money I do my DR test as as much as possible cost money to do the dr test well it, it does it does so when we you're, you're take you know if you're saying you're going to restore your biggest server once a month then you know some you, guy's going to sit and babysit that and not be doing something useful how often realistically how often do you do recovery tests for your clients but is, is this a manual process no it's not manual. So that's what I mean. If it's a scheduled process and it does it automatically in the background and it gives oh. me a report, I do it every week. But realistically, how often are you doing it? Not what you want, it's but how often are you doing no, it? No, now you're thing. not doing it because it's not automated. Because it is a manual process. Hans, remember, this is a backup solution. It's not, you can't automate this to restore my Exchange server and bring my Exchange server back up and show me that it's actually working. This is, you know, you what you can automate is we'll download that the software for that server from the cloud to your site. You still have to recover the server to see if the data is any good. It's not completely. It can, right. Well, the level of automation is up to the organization. Yeah, but but uh, you, you can, know the, if the kind of a, the kind of recovery a, testing that Hans is talking about yeah. is not will the data come? It's will the application come back? Yeah, and that takes. You isn't, know, isn't that's that not a what DR test? Yeah, but this isn't a this isn't a, a 
fail over to the cloud DR solution. This is just transferring. It's a that backup data. solution. Okay. Well, but but they no, can no, no, they no. can they can fail over into the cloud if they want. So some service providers deploy a backup service, and if the customer wants to, they can recover the data into VMs in the service in, provider's cloud. In their cloud. compute cloud. Yeah, in yeah. their compute and cloud. And, and we'll even touch that when we start to talk about replication. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, Hans, you're right. Most use cases are not. They recover, you know, data every week. The objective here was to address the classic DR tests in mid-market and enterprise accounts for you know, that, that are looking to, you know, IBM's recovery services and HP's recovery services and, you know, Phoenix in the UK and, you know, you SunGuard. SunGuard. And you have, you know, you have the class and, and mid market and enterprise customers don't, the reality is they don't schedule such DR tests because they're very labor intensive, you know, and they, you know, they, and the, the standard SunGuard contract, you know, gives you two days a year to do it. You can pay a premium to do more and so yeah. on. So that, <laughs> the, the point is the point is that if you want if you know it's a test, you've scheduled it in advance yeah. and it's not a real production test. Uh, because in a real production test in a real production recovery, of course, you know, you want your data back instantly. That's the objective. So anyway, this this slide here is really just adoptions yeah, in the last twelve months. We just wanted to give you uh, feedback on how we've been doing. So as I said, 98% of new customers have adopted the new model. 35% of existing customers have moved to the new modder model. And of the customers who are on the model, they have seen an immediate 40% reduction in their uh, backup and recovery licensing. It's 98% of the new customers choose that. Did you see a spike in new types of customers that came for that? New, new types? What, what do you yeah. mean by new types? It, the, the license it doesn't show attracted. how many new customers you have. Did you see a spike in the amount of new customers because of your new model? Uh, because of your new licensing? Oh, now I yeah. understand. Customers yeah. Yeah, specifically yeah. coming for yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, we did, we did because Historically, people s switch backup solutions fundamentally for two reasons. One, there's a broken promise, and two, cost. A lot of the other reasons are ultimately rooted in one of those two. A broken promise, or and the broken promise, I mean, there's a million promises that are made, right? Yeah, but... And then the cost and is... And frequently it's, you know, and the tech support knows what they're doing. But, but that's the part of it. That's part of the promise. That's part of the promise. But but that's okay. what that's a broken promise, right? There's a million different types of promises, but it's some broken promise and cost. I can't afford this anymore because of whatever reasons right. and so on. So, we did, and actually the the spike was mostly caused by in the last twelve months. Uh, so out of those two, cost, cost was the main one that caused the spike in our business. It wasn't a broken promise. It was cost. Okay. Yeah. Thank you.